All right. Good afternoon, folks. This is Steve KF5JUF. Hope everyone's having a good weekend and so forth. So today what we're going to go over is we have, uh, we were discussing at breakfast this morning some different variations of different uh, software-defined radios, uh, radio packages that would allow you to actually interact with your radio directly from your computer, uh, including uh, transmitting through your headset and so forth. So we were talking this morning and we came across this project here, this uh, software, and then you're looking at it right here that allows you to do several things. But what I wanted to do first is show you what the software looks like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give you uh, a step-by-step -step of how to install it. So what I'll do now, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the radio and exit the software. And we'll take you to the installation part of it. There's actually two parts of the software that are installed, and I'll kind of go over each one of them here. Uh, let me, I've got some PDFs and things that I've been working on, but what I'll show you first is uh, the connection is actually going to be a RT42 USB cable, and this is where it connects here in the back of the radio, and then of course it goes into one of your ports on your laptop. Um, so what we'll do is we'll kind of discuss part one, which is the actual uh, USB uh, driver and what this software does is this is an actual driver that uh, goes that you load up uh, from your um, oh, somebody's on the radio there hold on what you'll have to do is you have to set up the comm driver and what you do is you'll go to this website here to download it and I've got that bookmarked already so this is the website that you'll go to download the driver that you install on your Windows 10 computer for example that's what I did so what you want to do first is you want to go to this link right here and I'm just going to do it and that way it'll be a little easier for you to kind of see and I'm going to put this here the first screen that's going to come up is going to be this guy right here so you will want to click on downloads now it's going to give you some options here based on your software packages in the instructions it says to use the uh, VCP window so what you'll do is click here now what you'll do is you'll actually download the zip file now I can I guess I can download this we don't uh, what I would do is you would just go ahead and download the zip file first and uh, we can actually just do this on the video that way you can see it I've already got mine loaded so it's no big deal so we're gonna go ahead and download the zip file first whoops uh, let's see let's go back here there we go now what we'll do next is I'll show you is you'll go to your um, where I have the file I've got it on my OneDrive here ham radio research uh, FT 991a Yesu suite now what we'll do here is I'll go ahead and step two will be to unzip it now why on when I unzip the file you'll click extract all now what's going to happen is it's going to create another it's going to create a folder with the same name but the zip is going to go away so watch this okay now now we have the folder so when you double click here double click here again this is the one you want to pick. You want to pick either you have an 86 or a 64 system. So what I did is now uh, we need to find out if you have an 86 or a 64 system. So the way to do that is, this shows it right here, pick a spot on your location to download the zip file. And actually that should say uh, windows.zip. save to your location on your computer right click and extract the files on the same folder or desktop and that's what we just did there and then what we'll do is we'll click on the uh, uh, particular driver we need so one way to tell the if you're an 86 or 64 is just type in uh, actually go to your desktop go to this PC and if you'll right click on properties this will tell you if you have an 86 or a 64-bit operating system so it says it right there just a quick way to, in case you need to know that uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, when you click on install it will take you through several menus and on the very last screen this is what you'll see here and you just click finish and that it means the driver has been installed and what this driver will do is this will act as a UART which is a device that 
enables communications between various devices and so forth. And I also did reboot the computer. I didn't put it in the step here, but I rebooted the computer. Now I've got this on a separate video. What we'll do is we'll go into the radio and we'll set up the uh, the two settings you'll need to set are number 72 and number 31. And I'll go through each one of those. Uh, on, I've got those on, on a separate video. Uh, one of them is the, uh, the data port, which is uh, you can pick data or USB. And you want to, of course, on this one here, select USB. Uh, the second option is number 31. You'll want to change the baud rate from 4800 to 38400. And then Though with those settings and the USB cable connected in the back of your radio, everything should work. Now, one thing I'll tell you is um, it said in the procedure, uh, do not connect your uh, radio to your computer until you have the driver installed and the software installed. So uh, that was something I did. So just kind of be careful of that. Just take notice of that. And of course, the last thing is, is what the connection will look like. Of course, you don't want to connect this until you're completely done with installing the driver for the USB port and the actual software. So the software can be downloaded here. Uh, this is the site here where I got the software. And you'll want to pick the suite right here that I picked for 64-bit. I'll download the software just like we did the, the software for the uh, for the other installation for the drivers. Double click on the software. Now you might be prompted to bypass your security. So what my computer did is it gave me the option to run anyway. So that was pretty simple, but you might have to go in there and disable security momentarily while you're, you're, you're loading or downloading this executable. Uh, then of course when you first time you launch the executable what will happen is I think actually when it first comes up after the install this is what you're going to see and you'll want to click uh, you want to make sure your COM port and what I would do is I would go to your device manager and just take a look and see which COM port you are in mine uh, the driver set up my laptop to have COM3 and COM4 available so then over here what we do is we just make sure we're on COM3 and our baud rate's 38400. But if you needed to check that and you weren't sure, you could just type device manager right here where that little magnifying glass is. Go down here to ports and of course you'll see it right there. All right, so then what we'll do is we'll click connect and this will actually, uh, I had my radio turned on when I did this and I went connect and then it, it went ahead and made a connection. I clicked save to save it. Now, um, what I did next was uh, I showed disconnect. Uh, it will be shown again. So on the above screen, I press save and click. It will only now when it shows disconnect, that means you're connected. So at this point, you don't really want to do anything else. Um, and then what will happen is you'll actually go in when it says uh, disconnect. You're you you are connected. And uh, that's the setup. And I think the next thing you do is I closed this screen here. I hit cancel and then I went to my desktop and I clicked on the icon. Now since you did the previous settings before when I clicked on the icon the radio will now show up. And again uh, double clicking on the icon your radio will turn on your radio initially. So there is a setting here where it says menus where you can actually uh, turn off your radio when you're done working with it and so forth. So. Overall, it's a pretty cool, easy software. I haven't done a whole lot with it. Uh, I'll make one quick connection here real quick, and uh, we'll go ahead and stop this video here. But uh, when you double-click on it here, kind of like we did in the beginning of the video, you now have control of it. We'll make it, we'll just turn it on real quick. And uh, like I said, this is just to get you started. I'll make some more videos later, but uh, it's going to go ahead and make the connection here. And... Uh, Okay, now it's got the audio, audio scope is working. Uh, but again, just real quick, uh, you can do different things. You can go from VFO uh, to memory mode, different things of this nature. Uh, but lastly, to turn it off, just turn it off and it'll actually shut off your radio. Okay, well that's the video. Uh, All right, this is Steve back, uh, KF5J. The two settings that we'll do on the radio uh, to get this working is, we'll go ahead and press and hold menu and set up. Whoops, I'm sorry, we need to press menu once quickly. I'm sorry, I had that wrong, so that's going to be press menu quickly. I'll fix that in the steps. So what we're looking for, the first one is number 72. Let me show you what it looks like when you go to it for the first time. You're going to see 
practice mode here. So what we'll do, press menu quickly. Now we want to go to number 72, which is where we are right there. Now what we'll do to access this is we'll go ahead and press select. Now you notice it becomes purple or violet. Now we have control of it with the multi knob. So we're going to change this one to USB. Now the next one we're going to locate is number 31. Let's see here, 31. Now it's already set to 38400. Let's go ahead and set it back to the default which is 4800, which is the way you'll find it on your radio. But to access it, press Enter. Now we have control of it. We're going to change this to, whoops, I goofed up here. Select. Now it's, see how it's violet now. Now we have control of it. So we're going to change this to 38400. Press Enter. And that's it. And we're going to back out quickly. And now we have the USB cable, of course, is connected in the rear of the radio. And then we have the same USB cable plugged into our uh, laptop. Now the cable I use is an RT42, which is actually the program radio that comes with this. So uh, you can look up RT42. I think it's a class A to class AB or something. But just Google RT42 and whatever type cable that is, that's the cable you can use. And then you'll be able to interface. So again, what happens is, real quick, lastly, I'll show you on the laptop. Of course, you saw it earlier, but whenever you double click on this here, and I'm using the evaluation version right now, there's your software. It's going to get, it's going to get uh, status from the radio. And there you are. And if you'll look over here, I can, as I make changes on the SDR, now look what happens. Was I do this, if I go to VM, now I'm back in memory mode. Now I'm going to actually scroll up. And I'm just going to go scroll down. If I want to go to 10 meter, there I am in 10 meter, and I can go in and manually enter a frequency. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, if I want to go ahead and enter a frequency. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so you can see you can go there's 12 meter. 2 meter again, VFO mode, and we can go back to memory mode. Okay, so uh, that's everything. That's it for this video. This is a quick introduction. I'll, I'll do some more research, but I had a lot of people asking me about uh, laptop software and interfacing with the radio. So this was kind of my first attempt, so I don't know how successful it'll be, but at least it kind of gives you an idea of, uh, at least one idea, how to get your 991A on your computer screen. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day, 73.